Drew York Show, live from ISO Radio in Toronto. I have a really special guest today. It's um, a time of celebration for him. Uh, he's got a brand new album out named uh, Orphan Black. Uh, Trey Mission, please come join me. Bro. Dude, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me, bro. Congratulations. It's like, a, I mean, I've listened to it like three times now. That shit's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. It's sick too that you like to hear that it's been like a years in the making thing too. Cause I think you can hear that. And like some of like the, even like in that first track, like the intro track, you can hear like the amount of thought that's put into something like that. Shout out to K notes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's crazy. That's like, well, for me, um, if you look at my discography, like I've, I've done virtually no mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, like I did, uh, I did one maybe that would be classified as a mixtape. I called it a promo. Right. This was that was and that was in like 2010. So, you know, there's a couple industry beats on there. But even from there, I was like producing my own shit and I was like making different stuff, you know. So uh, really, I've been making albums from from since then. So like I, f I feel like I'm a, I'm still a new artist in the sense like I haven't, you know, uh, got that quote unquote break yet. You know, and so, um, but I'm, this is my third album, technically. You know, I had Mommy's on first, Stigmata, and now this one, Orphan Black. So, yeah, I think that's what it is, really. I've, I've had practice so far. I've done some things I liked and some things I didn't like on albums and on songs to where, you know, any, it was like anything else you go into and you're like, all right, this time I'm going to make sure I don't do that. You know, and after this album, I'm going to have some more epiphanies like that, you know, like about other shit, so... Is there something that you, because I remember got put onto your music when um, Stigmata was announced, when like all that promo shit was happening. Yeah. Um, is there something that you learned, you think, maybe from around that time? Because that was like, that was like 2015, right? 2014. 2014. Yeah, that was uh, around wow. this time, 2014. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, is there anything you specifically remember from that time that you like, that you maybe did that, that you definitely didn't do this time, or something that you maybe carried along that you definitely did this time because you like, it was successful last time? Um. Well, one thing that I that I've carried on from even from Mal is uh the way I uh put my album together as far as sequencing and you know the track listen like I try to go out the box. Obviously everyone does this stuff though, but like you know I'll put I I try to do some interludes and you know what I mean something to shake it up and make it more of a journey that you can travel through you know what i mean like uh on malmaison i had instrumental tracks you know what i'm saying um and then on malmaison and stigmata i had my boy cold summers do like a spoken word track that i produce and he you know what i mean right, cold right. summers interlude and cold summers outro so I think there might be two cold summers interludes and a cold summers outro but yeah so you know that's like one of those things for sure that I learned along the years, you know. I want to quickly just touch on the fact that you were had an interview with Master T today. I think that's just so yeah, fire. Yeah, bucket Shout list. Out to Master man. T. I think that's like sure. so crazy because it's like, well, it's crazy for me too because like, just in like, I'm sure like in retrospect, like in a couple of days from now, I'll be like, holy shit, it's funny that like earlier today you were Master T and then you like came into an interview with yeah. me. That's just so fire. Sick, sick. Yeah, <laughs> it's a sick day for sure. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Man. Thing, I mean, like, yeah, maybe just, I mean, we were just talking about it a minute ago, but like, maybe just talk about the importance of like much music to you. Because that theme, it sounds like you were like on it from early. Yeah, well, for me, um, I've, I've, I've liked music. I've loved music from since like the beginning. You know, I can't even remember when it started for me. I don't even think my mom can, you know? So a lot of people i talk to them about their musical history just even people that aren't artists and uh, it starts around double digits for them usually you know right before high school for a lot of people even and for me like i was sitting at home watching the mix and rap city on 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 tv from since i was like six years old and shit you know and there was even a point like there was like a long uh period where our tv like, we had lost, my mom takes really good care of stuff, right? So, like, TVs and shit last her, like, 10 years and shit. Like, so, 
the TV that we had, it was in good condition, but she lost the remote and we couldn't get a we couldn't get a universal remote that would work with it. So she wasn't trying to get rid of this TV, but it could only go up to channel, I think, 39, right? And uh, because we didn't have the remote, it was just, that was just, we need to fix some settings. So what happened is I had a limited amount of channels compared to what I used to have and what I would have later on, you know? So for a good chunk of years, like the only real music channel that I had was much music. So I'm thankful for that too, because that opened up my mind to a lot of shit. Like, because I was into rap and shit already, I probably would have just been on BT, just watching BT only and waiting for the rap song on much music when BT's showing them. You know what I mean? But because of that, like, because it was limited, I, I was, you know, you know, when you're a kid, it's like, if you have a video game, you'll do every part of that video game. Like, whereas now you just do the main bits or whatever. So it was like, I would watch everything on much music. I'd watch everything on YTV. I'd, and like, you know, just the aesthetics and shit of those, uh, those, those, those channels, I think influenced a, some of, a lot of art that we see now and even video styles from a lot of directors that come out of Canada and stuff. It's like a lot of it, you could see the influence of. Yeah, they're all like uh, students of like Art Attack. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Show Art Attack. Oh, I love Art Attack. Yeah, that shit was dope because he, they would show it super close up and he'd just be like throwing salt. And you're like, what yeah, the I hell is this nigga doing? Life. Yeah, I totally like just changed the way I thought about art for sure. For, before I even, or I mean, even knew I was thinking about art, you know? It, it, you know what it did? It, it showed you like the importance of detail, how a little small detail adds to a huge big thing as, as with a young mind, you know, you kind of, it's something that that concept develops, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember. Heart attack was sick. I remember I got put on to your music by, um, I think it was Raz Fresco. Like. That's my guy. Shout out Because that was like one of the first, he was one of the first artists that was ever like letting me take photos of them. Like four years ago or whatever it was and yeah he was just like he i remember putting him putting and um and six letters too i remember they're putting like putting me onto your music because they were like they were it, to them you had like done the impossible like just by like assembling like that cast of characters you know on stigmata like you'd have like all these legends on this pro and they think like, they, they in their mind you just like done the impossible like it just broken the matrix for them that's crazy that's crazy and i actually know hustle too because shaw hustle had a, that's my guy he too beats. he had a bunch of beats from you yeah. and then i didn't know you were a producer and so okay. he, was, he was playing beats for me and i'm like yo these are beats are fucking nuts and he's like yeah like he's produced all his own shit and i didn't even take that in from like listening to your project sick i actually known crazy. six letters since like grade 11 <laughs> yeah he came to my house on the block in like yeah grade 10 grade 11 he came smoked him out he'll tell you i had i made him tap out you know what i mean he smoked <laughs> out now but he that day when he came i made him tap out him and him and my nigga um too nice shout out too nice i haven't seen him in a minute but yeah big up to those guys man was he always like a babe head like he is now well at that time head? i don't think he was on the babe yet he might have been and I didn't notice, you know what I mean? But he was always on the, they used to call him fresh. You know what I mean? He was always on the gears, you know what I mean? Like, even like when certain jeans started coming into style, he was like the first man stepping out the box rocking them, you know, that, that I was <laughs> seeing, you know? So, yeah, but he was, yo, know, you see this, see six with the babe shit? Like, I know a lot of people, like, they, they front about shit like, yo, I'm, I'm heavy, with, I have all the polo and uh, I'm low god or I have, you know what I mean? Not Raz, Raz the next guy too, that, you know what I mean? Or I have all the babe, I have all the preem, but yo, six letter has all the preem. He really has I've been all to the his pieces. house, it is ridiculous. Yo, every day, no word of a lie, he wears, not be, not preem, sorry, he has all the babe. The babes, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Every single day, he wears babe head to toe. Head to toe. When I say head to toe, yeah. he has babe earrings, babe hat, maybe a babe do-rag if he feels like it. He has a babe shirt, yeah. babe <laughs> underwear, boxers, and then like the, the accessories, he'll have like a babe binder and has like babe stickers on it. And then like he has like the pencils. Babe socks. And like, <laughs> His ute is babe head to toe. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. 
It's crazy. It's crazy. He has like the ice creams too. He has the shoes. That's what's crazy to me. It's like that's rarer. Mm-hmm. That's a lot harder. To and he like, rocks them every day like it's nothing. Because he has his size. And that's like, how do you like how do you acquire a collection like that? And then they're all in your own size. I was on Raz's <laughs> album. We did a track called Swerving and Bape. I remember we're, that video. Because yeah, we're frauds. <laughs> we're frauds. So we had to go to six and get him to bring us pieces. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got we had a one, two of our own, but yeah, he came with the with the exclusives. That's so funny. Um, I wanted to ask you, well, just because like one motivation behind like doing this show has been like, um, trying to like put more value behind like being Canadian and like Canadian culture and like Canadian, being Canadian is sick, you know? And like, yeah, for sure. Much music is sick. And like all these things that like, we sort of forget, like, because the American market is like so powerful and so strong. I think some of people and the, that. And they like to, you know, they like to make fun of us, you know, it's really easy yeah, yeah, to do sure. so. Um, one of the reasons I did that, yeah, is to, to sort of build more value in Canadian content. And so I wanted to ask about um, the importance of Frieza Chin to um, not only just Toronto, but in grime in Toronto. Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't know how many people would be really playing it outside in clubs and venues and shit if Frieza wasn't out doing it, you know? And grime is a is a thing that I started getting into when I was like, I, I was already putting, mu- I've been putting music out since I was like in like grade nine or 10, you know what I'm saying? Like just even that's like on Facebook and shit. And like, you know, like everyone's known me as a, as a, as at least a rapper since forever. Um, but so by the time I got into grime, Frieza was already probably eight years deep or something. You know what I mean? pushing that on this side wow you know what i'm saying so there's like i've met guys old school artists and they're like yo frieza i was sending him tracks in 2006 and you know what i'm saying these times i didn't even know who this guy was and frieza was on it you know so um yeah and just overall like frieza because i wouldn't even say frieza is a grime dj frieza can play everything i'm talking obviously all the hip-hop and shit he could do a current set right now at fucking apartment 200 and shut it down you know what i mean but you could make frieza go to a dance hall event he'll shut that down yeah soka the man could draw for soka like he like he's a dj you know what i'm saying and then when it comes to uk stuff like you already know his i have a thing going right now with me and me and frieza in the dms where i send him tracks that i discover old house tracks and shit like that and like old like jungle and uh, so far i've only been able to get one where he didn't know the song you know what i mean so his knowledge is just crazy and again like he's been putting on for all of that stuff here from time things like bump you know what i mean and even uh same with people like marcus nasty and um or sorry marcus visionary, visionary. yeah mixed them up there yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> yeah you know what i mean they've been putting on you know what I'm saying? And even way harder than I have because I'm an artist too. I'm kind of focused on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what I do. So, yeah. Very important for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's sick that when the music started crossing over here like a little stronger, mm-hmm. it was sick that he was getting booked as the opening DJ for all these yep. guys when they were yep. doing their first shows coming over here. That was yeah. just so sick to me. And that's, you know, based on the the the, the work that he did before that yeah it's you like gotta, the roots and the reputation it's like you got to put respect on it and you got to book him you know what i'm saying who else are you gonna put the, it looks funny if it's you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even know these artists if it weren't for him playing them exactly out, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly no, it's sick that it's like yeah i think he's just like somebody that deserves like yeah when they talk about like giving people their flowers before they're gone you know that's like facts. somebody for sure that deserves like those accolades you know facts facts big facts i was talking to him about because i um I posted the other day, like somebody, or I'd fa- I refound like the 99.9% video or the, is that what it's called? 99%. 99%. Yeah. I like ref, I had found the video like time ago, but I like sort of refound it recently. And he was like messaged me. He's like, yo, I was like so high in that video, like so high that day. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of, <laughs> we were burning it down. That it's was sick that like, um, it's sick that, that you've, continue to foster those relationships you know that like that there's a lot of people that especially nowadays that like they'll go and they like somebody or they go and they make a song with somebody and then it's like a bunch of pictures and a bunch of like whatever and then they don't sort of like continue 
on, you know, there's people to go separate ways. Like it's sick that you've continued to foster some of those relationships. Well, for me, I mostly, I link with people based off two things like music or on a personal level, you know what I'm saying? So, and music always, it always starts with music really, you know, and I never link on like a clout thing. Like it's just, I, I'll link if we connect musically, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like somebody comes like in the city and I'm like, yo, so-and-so is here. I got to make sure that I'm beside them when they go like, this, you know, and there's people around me that are like, bro, you should be out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, so-and-so's here, bro. You should be out like doing whatever, whatever. But it's just, that's not who I am because I'm, I'm really an artist. You know what I mean? Re so that's why I think when I do collab with people, especially like it's pretty well received every time on both sides from their fan base and my fan base, you know what I mean? Something like 99% or things that me and Murky do, they fuck with it because it's not cut and paste, you know what I mean? It's not, yo, it's, most of my collabs are not even email, like we were there, you know what I mean? Even like Rally on my album with JME, we were, we were in the studio together, the track with Wiley and Andrina on Stigmata. We were all three of us were in the studio. When together. you can tell, I think you know sometimes, like as like a music fan, you can really tell when like shit's just pieced together. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's that's it for me. Like you know, what I mean, and like I said, like either music or on a personal level, like Murky's always on my shit. Like that's bro, you know. Same with L's. We linked on music to begin with too. Same with me and Murky, but those are like my actual peoples, you know. So when we do a song. You could feel that, like you said, people can tell, you know, that because that because that cut and paste energy. Sometimes you'll be in the studio and it's like, oh, your A and R and my A and R under the same label, put us in studio, and you could hear that too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good. People just meet and they instantly, you know, like, you know, hit it off. But yeah, um, again, I base the link ups off those things, and I think that's authentic and that's pure, you know. So that's why. It, you know, it's like we'll always work again. We'll always link again because it's not forced. Right. Speaking about murky, I think that my favorite like um, freestyle or like you've ever done, I think, is that Mad About Bars with murky. People like, love that. that. I love I that love one too. Love that shit. I've played like I've run that so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, I re I repost that one. I love that one. Well, that shit's sick. He's crazy. He's just like, his style is like unmatched. Yeah, he's literally one of the best MCs that's... That sounds hungry, you know? <laughs> for, listen, he's a savage on the mic. It's, I've, I, literally, I've, no one I've, I know, except for Wiley, has impressed me with a mic in front of them, just spitting as much. It's just Wiley and Murky. Those are the two people where I'm like, oh, fuck, you're on another level when it comes to this mic thing. You know what I mean? Not just... Is Murky like writing or is he freestyling a lot of that stuff? Uh, Murky is a writer for sure. I'm also a writer. Yeah. You know? Murky is a writer for sure. Do you write a lot outside of like listening, like if outside of like a studio situation, like outside of like a music making situation? Are you like nah. one of those people? Well, sometimes I'll like think of something or I'll say something to someone in a conversation and I'm like, yo, I just say, yo, let me write that in my notes. And I'll just try to write it in like the coolest, cleverest way without trying to make like a setup line or anything. I'll just write it. And a lot of times those ones aren't really like metaphors or punchlines. It's just something I felt like I want to say in my music, you know. Um, but for me, my mo most of my inspiration, like my inspiration is at its best in the studio, in front of the mic and in front of the speakers and just being in that in the zone. environment. Yeah. And I, and I like to just... I like to record as I go along too, especially making the beat. I'll be I'll, I'll be like halfway done a beat and I'll think of something and I'll just export it, go do up whatever. Sometimes I'll end up finishing the song and then come back and then I, you know what I mean, go in on the beat a little bit more. Um, I want to ask you about, um, I just think uh, like your like maybe credit as a producer sometimes isn't like isn't like recorded like people isn't like documented as well like as like as your reputation as like an MC. i feel like people don't even like some people wouldn't even know that like all of some of these projects are like completely if not like almost entirely like produced by you like i remember even like um 
I think it was it must have been Shaw that told me that it was like whenever like that first come down song came out. Like wasn't that it wasn't that a Trey Mission beat? Um the second not, come down. No, it's no. the It was uh oh, what's fuck. her name? Yes. That's what it's called. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Even like that too was like the beginning of me trying to really step out and show the world what that I was a producer because in Toronto locally like there's hella rappers that are like five to ten years older than me that will tell you that they that they remember me back in the day when I was in high school. I was in and out of studios and I was in the studio every night making beats and I was selling beats to niggas. Niggas, have, I've, there's times I was going to school with like stack of money on me because I just sold a beat or I sold five beats to a man earlier. I'm gonna go break the bread with my brethren to help me make them after and like that's like how deep I was into the music from back then. You know what I mean? So enough people knew me as a producer first mm. in the sense where they saw me making beats and then one day, like, there, there's times, like, I'll be in the studio when I'm, like, 16 and Sonny Diamonds is the engineer, see? He used to have me in the studio and everything, like, all the time and um, niggas are making a track and they're, like, two, two, two niggas wrote a verse, laid their verse down, like, yo, we need a third verse. A man's struggling to write a verse. They're listening to his verse, too. It's whack. They're telling him it's whack. Like, fuck, what are we going to do? This guy's verse is trash. Sonny says, yo, bring Trey in here. Certain niggas are there, too, that are, like, from my ends, and they know that Trey could spit. And then other niggas are like, what? You think Trey could jump on this thing? And the fam, he's going to kill it. You know what I mean? And then I come in there and live. I've never heard the track. Sonny's like, yo, spit something. And I spit something. That, like, that's how people found out I was a rapper. And, and that's how even, like... um my respect I started gaining as a rapper, you know what I mean? It was like from those kind of situations and those sessions with like niggas older than me. A lot of niggas in this city that, you know what I mean? That that uh, knew about me from those times. So I started out as a producer and then it kind of flipped. Everyone just more knew me because I got like, because I was so heavy into the grime shit too and into that like, I just end up going a lot of places just spinning. You know what I mean? I'll be on I'll be on the radio in England spitting. I'll be over here in, on Boiler Room spitting. Someone asked me to do a freestyle for their channel. That used to be a big thing in grime. Do a freestyle for my channel. I'd film yeah, it yeah, yeah. here, send it back over to them. I'm just spitting. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, like with Mal Maison, I went into it with the same thing like with this album where I'm like, yo, I want to show people that I could do, that like I'm an artist, how musical I am. But then I realized I could do that with the production. And that was around the time when I first met Fiji and Castro and them. And um, I remember I was at a party and they were with this nigga that I thought was Tory Lanez. He just looked like him to me, right? But he had braids, so it was tripping me out. I was kind of, I was drunk and high and shit. And he came up to me like, yo, I fuck with your music, whatever, whatever. It's their boy. He was like super turnt too, right? I'm like, yo, is this Tory Lanez? I know Tory Lanez is turnt too. And then it wasn't. I figured it out. But then they, they played We Are Not. And a lot of their people, like their friends was there and shit. And I just seen like, the reaction and i felt the song and i was just like what the fuck i was like yo this is like some next shit they like have something here you know so they used to live together and they said yo come to the crib or whatever we want to like do, do do some work with you and shit and i would just the first few times i went over there i just went over there and like talked to them about music and because i was already a few years deep in it you know and so because of that relationship too when we made that song that was when i was really getting like my producer hat on you know what I mean? Like that song was on a different beat before. They had the beat. They didn't record it. They just had the beat and they spit it. And I remember I was like, yo, this beat's trash. Let me remake this beat. And I wasn't even <laughs> hating. The beat was actually, that beat wasn't good. And they, after they're like, yo, you're right. And um, yeah, we went to the studio and like I made like their friends get in the booth with them. That's why it sounds so big too. Like on the hook, it sounds like a group of people, like a whole room full of people yeah, shouting yeah. and shit. And like, yeah, that shit turned out epic and people loved it. And from there... I liked how it felt like to give that to someone else. You know what I mean? And I also felt more like I felt like it was easier. Like that song did better than mostly anything I ever put out. You know what I'm saying? As far as numbers. Word. And it felt so easy because I didn't, the pressure wasn't on me to perform in the booth. It wasn't on me for the song to perform or nothing. It was just, it felt good. And I felt like I was good at it, you know? So from there, I started really sending beats out to people artists in the uk and shit and like yeah um it's sick yeah i my my memories from like that kind of time were just that 
they like, I remember Jazz brought them out as a special guest, uh, like the Danforth. I remember that. 2015, because yeah. he was opening for Ray Schremert. Yeah. And I he brought that. them out as a special guest to perform it. And like everybody knew the words. And I just remember th- look, looking around and thinking this, like, there's no way that these people actually know who they are. You know, yeah, there's no yeah. way these actually know these guys, but they know they've heard the song so much because like whatever that like summer 2015, maybe they were everybody was running that. shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was out that summer. I was out here and it was it was trust me, there was a lot of places and they would just come through and make it like super turn, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I really I really like doing that, man. Making beats and just not having the pressure of being the artist. Um, my last two questions would be, uh, who do you want to see on the show? Like after this, who else would you want to see do this? Um, yo, we, we, we actually spoke about this earlier. We should get master T on here. That would be amazing. Yeah, That'd be a big, that'd one. be that'd amazing. Be sick. I think that's cool. Cause we could think maybe that's like, uh, yeah, we're talking about like making Canadian and giving people their flowers and making exactly, Canadian content exactly, and exactly. more value in it. It's like. Yeah, like a and he needs that. With him. He needs that. You know, they they need to give him his flowers for real. And I think, I think you would give him the right flowers. You know what I'm saying? That's sick. <laughs> um, what about um, what about two food recommendations? They don't even have to be in Toronto. Maybe at least one here, but just yeah, two solid spots. All right, all right, all right. I'll tell you this: in Toronto, gotta go to Shawarma Empire. It's, it's on Lawrence between Pharmacy and Warden. I've been going there from since way back high school. That's the best shawarma on the planet. That's not from where they make shawarma, like where they invented it at. You know what I'm saying? That shit is fire. Go there. Um, it's good price too. Um, and then in London, there's a spot called Black and White Cafe. It's in Brixton. And it's Jamaican food. And that's the best Jamaican food in London, hands down. That's key. That's key. Good people to too, you know? So yeah, those two spots. Dude, bless. Thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. Okay, Drew York Show. Until next time. Uh, yeah, go stream that Orphan Black right now.